Howdy howdy and welcome to the Tea Weasel, where we pair teas with movies. I am your host and today we'll be looking at That's right, you guessed it, A Whisper of a Heart, Studio Ghibli's 1955 masterpiece, starring everybody's favorite study buddy, the lo-fi music girl. Don't believe me? Here! Still don't believe me? Well, how about now? Yeah, practically the same thing. The tea I'm pairing with this movie is a barley tea, or mugi cha. The reason for this is because it's actually in the movie. Made my job a whole lot easier. After our main female protagonist returns from the store, she offers her dad iced tea. Now, if you have the subtitles on like I always do, you'll see it says barley tea. Subtitles are very often a direct translation and don't always match the dialogue because it gets Americanized. And it's been a while since I've been in the States and I don't think barley tea is a thing there. Let me know down in the comment section if it is a thing or not. Anyways, to perfectly match this movie, I went to Family Mart, where they sadly do not sell families. Sorry. But they do happen to sell barley tea. So I got myself a bottle of it, which I drank before I could show you guys, and then Family Mart brand bag Mugi Chai. Cha. Now, I know what you're thinking, random commenter. Suzuki did not get barley tea from Family Mart. She got milk. Her mom also got onto her about using a bag when she could have just not asked for a bag. And I like the fact that even in 1955, they're making a deal about using a bag. Go green, save the only planet I can take over. I mean, only planet we live on. Part of the reason why I wanted to include the Family Mart trip in this video is just to help connect the real world setting to this movie. Also, Japanese convenience stores are amazing. But I digress. Barley tea tastes a bit like coffee, and it's an acquired taste if you ask me. It's caffeine free, low in sugar, and has a lot of health benefits, including helping lower your blood pressure and loads of antioxidants. This tea is cool, relaxing, and good for the heart. So you can whisper to it and fight the heartwarming sensations that this movie will try to make you feel. This tea is easy to make. Simply follow the instructions on the package. In my case, it was one bag for one liter, two hours in the fridge, which is nine minutes shorter than the movie. It's a really simple tea to make. Pour it into your most studiest cup and enjoy. Make sure it is a spoiler proof cup because I am about to talk about this movie. Like most Hayao Miyazaki movies, it is a movie about a young girl coming of age. In this one, the young girl's name is Shizuku, and her main personality trait is she is a bookworm. She checks out a lot of books from the library, and all of them have one name before her. Seiji Amasawa. And their love starts like most young love, with one of them hating the other one. They do quickly become friends because of a cat and a cool grandpa. You know, normal kid stuff. Just as their relationship is about to happen, Seiji runs off to Italy to follow his dreams of becoming a world-class violin maker. <laughs> but promises he will come back to her soon. While Seiji is gone, Suzuku buckles down and follows her new dream of becoming a writer. She completely stops doing everything and focuses solely on writing. This includes her high school entry exams. For those of you that don't know, Japan you have to try to get into certain high schools, kind of like America in college except better. The Japanese school systems are a lot like the ones in the United States, but only in the opposite way where Japanese school system is really well done, opposed to the American one 
which is broken, because Japan does everything better. Suzuki actually does become a writer in the Ghibli-verse, and they did make a movie of the book she writes. The adult Suzuki's book actually becomes a Studio Ghibli movie, and a manga you can read. They are called The Cat Returns. After she's done writing the first attempt of her book, she decides she wants to become an author and starts studying to get into a good high school. Shortly after this, she wakes up and looks out her window to see none other than Seiji waiting outside. She runs downstairs and Tackle hugs him and they ride off on his bike to the sunrise where he confesses his love and says he wants to marry her one day. Just a reminder, these guys are like middle schoolers. That's pretty much the movie. An oversimplification, but yeah. Oversimplification of events, but yeah. I left out a lot of the best details, so if you haven't watched this movie, go watch it so you can get the full great story. Fun fact, well, not really fun, just more of a fact. After this movie came out in the States, a lot of people actually got really depressed from it. Not because it's a sad story, but because their love life wasn't going like it was for these middle schoolers. And according to several chat rooms about their depression from this movie, apparently people were killing themselves from it. There were no documented cases about someone killing themselves from this, but that is the theory that some people did. And after watching this movie, or just in general, if you feel depressed, sad, like killing yourself or hurting yourself, just know there are people you can talk to. Here is a phone number for a suicide hotline that you can use toll free. There also is a link in the description where you can find all their information and their number. And no, all of us here at the Tea Weasel, we love you, Charles loves you, and we want what's best for you again. And again, here is that number. Ending this kind of on a solid note, but until next time, watch a movie and have a relaxing.